Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. If you would stand with me. It's welcome to 2023. Aren't you excited about a new year? Amen. Praise God. Amen. 2022 is behind us. Thankful for what God did for us in 2022, but thankful also for the things that are behind us. Praise God. Amen. And never to come back in Jesus' name. Amen. But uh, we're looking forward to what God has in 2023. God is on the throne. He is working. Amen. He is the one that has all power in heaven and in earth. And in him do we trust. Amen. I'm so glad that I have uh, God to hold on to, that I have God to rely on. He's faithful. He's just. Amen. He's loving. He's kind. He's good. Amen. And he's the one that leads us and guides us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's bow our heads and let's just pray. Amen. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do in our lives. And we just pray your blessing upon this service today as we spend some time here to worship you, to magnify you, that your presence, Lord, would come down in this place in a special way and touch us, God, Lord, and, and direct us and speak to us and guide us, God, in this hour. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory today. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you want to stand and worship, you may. If you want to sit and worship, you may today. Praise God. But I just want us to spend a few moments worshiping God, magnifying the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Amen. Praise God. Let's magnify him in song today. For whose report will you we shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am filled. His report says I am filled. His report.
is up to something. God is up to something.
shall say to this mountain, be removed, and it shall be, <coughs> and it shall be, amen, and it shall be. Somebody speak to your mountain right now. Speak to your impossibility right now. Speak to your sickness right now. Amen. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a way maker. Oh, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in your word. You've said it. Lord, you've said it. Your word declares it. And I stand on it today. I stand upon your promises. I stand upon, Lord, your blessings. I stand upon, Lord, your words today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for your touch today. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so thankful, amen, that we have him to trust in 
Amen. He has all power in heaven and in earth. Nothing is too hard for him. I can do all things through Christ. What I'm quoting right now is just the word of God. It's not words that I put together, but this is just the word of God. Amen. And his word is forever settled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass. Amen. You can build your life around it. You can build your hope upon it. Amen. His word, amen, will never return unto him void, but it will do that which he sent it to do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And we can trust in his word today. Amen. We can put our full trust in his word today. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I just want to speak to you for a few moments. If you have a, have a seat there. Amen. I'm not going to hold you, the Lord willing, very long. But I have something as we start. Amen. Into 2023. Amen. I believe that this has got to be something that we need to start this year with. And that is we have got to control our thought process. We have got to learn to control what we think on. And we must, amen, for us to begin to overcome the battles, the difficulties, the anxieties, the worries, it starts right here. It starts in the mind. It starts in the what we think on. Amen. I preached a message when I, I mean, I remember a, a message that was preached when I was just a teenager. And, uh, and, and I wish I could remember who the preacher was. I, I, I don't. I probably could go on YouTube and find out who it was because everybody's on YouTube anymore. But, but, uh, but it really helped me during those teenage years. And then when I became a, a young preacher, I preached at a youth revival and, and uh, uh, the same kind of thought. And, and my youngest brother came up and told me how much it helped him. Uh, during his teenage years and, and, and that. And so I won't preach the full scale of it today. Somebody says, oh, oh okay, all right. Praise God. Amen. I was hoping, no, preach it, pastor. Amen. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Amen. But, but, uh, but I, I just want to, I believe it's so vitally important that we control our thoughts. For it's through our thoughts that we take action. And it's by our actions that we develop our behavior. And it's through our behavior that we develop the character that we are. And I don't mean good or bad character, but I mean the character that we are and what we stand before God. God wants us to be strong in this hour. God wants us to be able to stand against the attacks of society. The attacks of anxiety, fear, doubt. The attack of just give up. The spirit of just quitting. God wants us to stand against that. And he has given us principles to stand on. But we must not allow our emotions to control us. But through our thought process, we can control our emotions. See, that's not being taught today. They think emotions rule everything, and whatever your emotion is, go with it because you can't do nothing about it. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You can control your emotions through your thought process. And that thought, thought, thought process, if you'll channel it through the word of God, will give you victory over your emotions. And those feelings, amen, won't be so powerful. But it starts with controlling our thoughts through the word of God. Amen. In fact, God knew that during this day and age that there would be attack on the mind. That's the reason why there are, uh, uh, there, are, the, there are many scriptures within the word of God. And I'm not going to go through them all. Okay, but I want to touch a few. Solomon, way back in his day, said this about our thinking. He said in Proverbs 23, 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's not however the heart determines and, and whatever feeling and emotion you got, that's who you are. No, it's how he, he that thinketh in his heart. What do you mean by thinketh in his heart? What do you talk to yourself about? When nobody else is around? When you look at yourself in that mirror, what are you saying? What are you thinking? So those are the things that we have got to learn to control. Because the devil would like you to think, oh, you're a bum, you're no good, you'll never be anything. That's a, a thought from the devil. That is not a thought from the word of God. God thinks good things towards you. God thinks positive things towards you. And God wants you to live as an overcomer. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Paul warned us. 
Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. For there is no temptation take, <coughs> excuse me, taken, taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with all temptations also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Whatever comes in your life, you can go through it if you have the right thought process and realize God's in control of this. You get that, you know, that letter in the mail. That used to be the letter in the mail. It's an email now, probably. Probably not even that. It's a text now. Uh, but, but you get some bad news. Your first response should be, God's got this. He knows all about it. But it's not. A lot of time it's, oh, whoa, we're in trouble now. And God wants to take your mind today and say, no, we're not going to think that way. We're going to put our full faith and trust in God. My father-in-law sent out a text today. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but I will remember the name of the Lord my God. That was the difference between David and Saul. Saul put his trust in himself. David put his trust in God. And you decide that. You decide that. I can't decide that for you. Mom and dad can't decide that for you. Amen. But you have to decide that for yourself. Amen. And so you have to understand God knows what he's doing, and I'm going to trust him. Probably the most vital scripture, passage in scripture, and I am very careful when I say something so extreme as I just said. But, But in my prayer and in thinking, I believe this is probably the most vital passage in scripture concerning mental health. And that is Philippians 4, 6 through through 9. If you're taking notes, you need to write that down. If you're taking a mental note, write that down. Because this is a vital scripture. The problem with our society around us is they don't listen to this passage. You've got to learn to listen to this passage. The Bible says, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, made known unto God. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. In other words, man don't understand it. The government don't understand it. Society don't understand it. No uh, human thinking can understand the peace of God. Because it passeth their very understanding. And it shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That peace of God is going to keep my heart right. And it's going to keep my thinking right. Okay? Through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and I know I'm reading through here, we'll make a comment about it here in a moment. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. What am I supposed to be thinking on? It just gave you a list. But how many times have we... Do we refer to this list rather than the list that the devil gives us? That's the issue. Our human nature will not listen, does not want to listen. The Bible says our carnal mind is at enmity. That means an enemy of the things of God. It does not want to listen to God. That's why you got to control it through the Holy Ghost. That's why I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because through his spirit in my life, I can take control over my thought process. And I can think on these things that he's told me to think on. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, I want to take a moment. I don't do this very often, but I I do want to read what the new King James Version says because it hits something here that I, that I, I really, I told you this is concerning mental health. That's the think process. Amen. And that is, this is the way it reads in the New King James Version. Verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. What's anxious? Anxiety. What's the biggest issue right now among our youth? Anxiety. 
what fills our hospitals right now. People having anxiety attacks. Why? Because the humanity is trying to rely on itself and not rely on God. And church, I'm, gonna, I'm preaching to you now. We can't allow that to be in the church. Okay? We have got to learn to trust in God. Now, do I believe that, that, that mental health, mental health is a, it, it is a, it's a real thing. I'm not saying it's not a real thing. But we have got to get to where we can trust in God. Because it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I'm just telling you, amen, I don't know how you can make it without church. I really don't. I thank God for the family of God. We had a wonderful time Thursday night just celebrating the family of God. Amen. Had a good time here earlier just celebrating the family of God. Thank God for the church. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and it's through that, amen, that, that, that peace of God that comes through Christ, amen, that guards our hearts and our minds. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, what, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any thing praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What a list. What a passage. It is so much easier to read than do. And this is something that we, there's, there's a reason that we get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and then we have to live our life. It's through that period of getting the Holy Ghost and the time that either our life's over or Jesus comes back, whichever comes first, that we have to learn to apply these things. And, and it's a work. Some days you bat a thousand, some days you bat, if you're lucky, a hundred. But the thing about it is, I believe the key to it is don't give up. The righteous man falls six, six times and what? Gets back up. Gets back up. Amen. Gets back up. And I believe as you get back up, amen, you're going to see things, amen, begin to develop in your walk with God. And you start going to have more victories than defeats if you'll get back up. Breaking these down real quick, because it says to think on these things. True, whatever, so ever things are true. What's true? It's got to be genuine, not counterfeit. Sometimes our, if we'll let our minds imagine things, they'll get so big and crazy. It's not even true. But our mind, boy, it can make it feel like it is. And if you're not careful, your emotions are all involved in something you've been meditating on that's never, ever happened. That person didn't really do that. But we imagined it, and we let our imagination carry away with us, and pretty soon we're, we are, we're so uh, sunk, there's no way we're ever going to be found. And that's why we got to be careful with what we think on. If it's of a true, is it true? Is it genuinely true? Not counterfeit. Honest. Honesty. Noble. Fair, moral principles. Is it based upon those things? Well, I heard this about so and so. Well, you know what? If it's you don't know if it's true, then don't think on it. Don't meditate on it. Just because somebody says it's true doesn't make it true. Okay, the the devil is a liar, and he loves his best way to 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 to, to defeat us is to take something that's partial, have a little truth mixed in it but it's mainly a big fat lie and we accept it and we receive it and pretty soon our, we're, our thinking and our, and our vision and our perspective is, is so distorted. Pure. Oh, I, I jumped once. You're supposed to jump at me. Just is the next one. What's just? Is it exact, accurate, proper? Don't, again, I, I said this a few moments ago, but don't let your mind imagine things that are not accurate. You are a child of God, and you can overcome. Nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's what the Bible says. That may not be what your mind tells you. That might not be what your family tells you. That might not be what society tells you, but that's what Jesus said. 
Nay, in all these things, we are more than come. We are going to defeat this. We are going to overcome this. We are going to be victorious because Jesus is the true God. And I'm going to put my faith and trust in him. Pure. Pure is undefiled or unmixed. When I was a younger, younger guy, I got into German shepherds. And it was very important to me when I raised German shepherds that they were pure. Unmixed. I wanted the pure breed. And now that's lost today, you know. Nobody really is into pure breeds. But when I was growing up, that was a, a thing. My grandfather was into quarter horses. And there was a very strict guideline you had to go by if that horse was going to be a quarter horse or not. And if you let any other bloodline get in there, then, you'd, then it was no longer a quarter horse. And you couldn't sell it as a quarter horse. So the price in that horse probably dropped, would drop almost $10,000, if not more. Because it was not a pure bread. Our minds cannot be mixed with sinfulness and wickedness for us to overcome. We've got to keep it pure. You've got to keep it pure. You can't let it mix with doubt. Oh, I'll just play around with this little idea. No, you can't play around with it. The Bible likens sin to a little fox. The little fox is spoiled the vine. The little things. You just let that little thing in, and pretty soon it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it takes over. You can't afford to let your thought process become mixed with the things of this world. Lovely. Those things that are deserving of love and devotion. Good report. Those things that are commendable and admirable. Virtue. Virtue is excellence. When I went into the, into the definition of this, that said piety. Well, I don't know about you, but piety is kind of an older English word. We don't use, how long has it been since you were, used the word piety lately? Pie? <laughs> there we go. I like that one. But not piety. What in the world is piety? Piety is your exercise of affection and obedience to God. Whoa, that's a pretty good word. Your exercise of affections in obedience to God. Not only does that, but it also talks pi piety uh, or virtue also talks about morality. So my piety to God and my morality to man. Piety is your love with, uh, with its face toward God and morality is love with your face toward your fellow man. That's what virtue is. That's what virtue is. And I'm going to think on those things. You want to know about love? 1 Corinthians 13. Go to it. That's not talking about a love between a man and a woman. I mean, it involves that, but it's really talking about a love between relationship, between each other, and between us and God. And if we're not careful, we'll fall short of that. And then the last thing it says is praise. Is it praiseworthy? If it's not praiseworthy, if it's not going to lift somebody up, don't meditate on it. Because it will steal your praise. It'll steal your hope. It'll steal your faith. These, this is the guideline for us through Scripture for us to, to, to overcome the, the thoughts of society that they're trying to invoke into the church of anxiety, of fear, of doubt, of just give up. Because that's ultimately the goal of the devil is for you to quit. Because he knows if you never quit, there's no chance he's going to defeat you. If you take on the mindset, I'm not quitting, I'm going to live for God. I might get knocked down, but I'm going to get back up and I'm going to live for God. I, I, I might have a bad day tomorrow, but I'll tell you what, tomorrow night I'm going to pray through. And Monday, uh, Tuesday morning, I'm going to get up and live for God. If you take that mindset, he can't defeat you. But if you ever say, well, I'll just give up. I don't know why I even try anymore. I'll just give up. Then you open the door to him. That's why you got to make up your mind, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. If I fall down, I'm going to get back up. So in closing, I would like to make a reference to a story. And I, I didn't even, I don't think I even gave you a, the title to this message, but it's Beware of the Traveler. And this is the, the gist of the message I told you I heard when I was a teenager and I preached later and, and, and that type of thing. But uh, um, it comes 
the story comes from the word of God in 2 Samuel 12. And we see here, the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came to him and said, hey, David, there were two men in one city. The one was rich, very well increased with goods, and, and the other was poor. In fact, the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought, bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his own bosom and was, uh, was unto him like a daughter. That's pretty important, but that, that's all he had was just little ewe lamb. Now, the rich man, he had all sorts of things. And the story goes on that Nathan was given to King David and said, and there was a traveler that came to the rich man's house. And the rich man spared not to take of his own flock or of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. But he took the poor man's lamb. He dressed it. In other words, he killed it. And he gave it to the traveler that had come to him. Now, as Nathan was given this story, King David became very greatly angered. In fact, his anger was greatly kindled, the Bible says, against this man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, that man that hath done this thing shall surely die. That rich man is going to die. How dare he do this? And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan turned to King David and said, Thou art the rich man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I, I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of, the, of Israel and Judah. If it had been too little, all I would have moreover have given you unto you such and such things. In other words, if that wasn't enough, I, I would have gave you more, David. Because you're my man. This is God saying to, to King David. If you needed anything else, all you had to do was ask. And, and I'd have gave it to you, David, because, because you're my man. But, David, you didn't do that. For you see, this little story came to David through the prophet Nathan just after David had taken Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, committed adultery with her, and then ultimately end up having Uriah killed to keep his sin secret. As we read this little story, many people focus on the rich man or focus on the poor man. And yes, what that rich man did was a terrible, terrible thing, taking the one little ewe lamb of the poor man. Yet, the gist of the story, the, 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 the flux of the story to me is Really, if there was no traveler allowed to stay in his house, there would have been no little ewe lamb taken and sacrificed. Because the rich man had opened his house to a traveler, that this little story took place. Because a rich man couldn't say, no, you're not staying here no more. That this little incident took place. All kinds of travelers or thoughts come our way. We must be very careful on what thoughts we allow to stay in our hearts and in our minds. But really, to really get the full application of this story and and this incident in David's life that he did this wicked sin and, 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 and godly sin and, and wicked thing. You must go back and take a look into 2 Samuel 11, the chapter before. And it says in verse 1, And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still in Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David rose from off his bed and walked up upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and required after the woman. 
When did that traveler, that thought, come into David's mind? What was the thought that came into David's mind that would cause all this horrible stuff to take place? Uh, the, the adultery, the, the, the murder of Uriah, and, and all this. What, 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 where did that thought get into his mind at? Many people think it's when he was walking on his, on his uh, uh, rooftop in evening time and saw Bathsheba, but I disagree with them. I think there's a thought that hit his heart a lot earlier than that. I feel that the traveler came or the thought came and David began to entertain that thought. And that thought was, I know it's time for the kings to go forth to battle, but you don't need to go to war. You've done your share of fighting. Let others do it. Just sit back, take it easy, and tarry in Jerusalem. It wasn't the evening time. It was the night before when he had decided, I'm not going to battle no more. I've done my share of battle. I've done my share of warfare. I, I don't need to go to battle no more. I'm going to sit back and, and take my ease and just, and, and just let things flow. That, to me, is the moment the traveler began to affect David's mindset. It was then that he began to realize, you know, he got lifted up a little bit of pride. I don't need to go there. I don't need to do those things. Somebody else can do it. So many, if we're not careful, and this is why I've done all this and brought all this to our attention to tell us today, it is not time to sit back and take our ease. As long as there's breath in your body, there's going to be a battle for your soul. As long as you live on this planet Earth, there's going to be a warfare going on. And the only way you're going to lose that warfare if you take on the mindset and the thought processes that, you know what, I don't need to battle no more. I'm just going to let go whatever, whatever takes place, just take place. And I'm going to sit back and do nothing. Pretty soon you're not praying. Pretty soon you're not reading the Word of God. Pretty soon you're not going to church. Pretty soon you have nothing to do with the church. Uh, pretty soon you're so far out there, amen, that the devil's got you all wrapped up in addiction and, 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 and society and the proce thought processes uh, of, uh, of the world around us. Uh, and pretty soon you're so far from God, you don't even know where the church door is. And it all started because I'm not going to fight today. I'm tired of fighting. Be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. Doesn't Nowhere does the Bible say, quit fighting. Nowhere does the Bible say that you can just sit back and do nothing. But God says we must stand strong in the power of the might of God. We must resist the devil. We must war against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. If, if we continue to fight, we won't have time to entertain the travelers of defeat and anxiety. If we'll stay in the battle, if we'll stay in, in, in battle mode, if we'll stay, uh, amen, on top of it, uh, amen, we won't have time to sit back and meditate on how bad we've got it. Uh, amen. But we'll be meditating how great God is because it's only in the battle that you're going to see the victory of God. It's only in the battle that you're going to see the might of God. It's only in the battle that you're going to see the miracle of God. Amen. And that's where God lives. And that's where God dwells. That's why we've got to stay in the battle. <coughs> we cannot afford to give in to the thought of sit back, take your ease. Was it not said of the man that had the great harvest? Oh, I will build more houses. And that night, he did not know that his soul was asked of him. Sit back and take my ease. Build bigger barns. And that night, his soul was taken from him. It is not time to entertain the thought of sitting back. It's not time to entertain the thoughts of giving up. It's time to get back into the battle. I, I, I don't know what 2023 has in store. If I have anything, amen, from 2019 till now, it's been battle after battle after battle. I don't know what it's going to be like in 2023. I would like to think it's going to be greater. It's going to be easier. It's, everything's going to go smooth. But my years of experience tell me it's probably not going to do that. But we have to start this year with a mindset saying, you know what? I'm going to live for God no matter what. 
I've got my, my, my. there used to be a, a preacher that would come by our way, an old preacher, he's passed on now, but he would sing a song, I, my mind made up, my foot's on the rock, my mind's made up, amen, and, 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 and that's what you got to, you got to make up your mind, I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. Whatever others do, I can't control that, but I can control me, and I'm going to keep my mind right in the presence of God. As you stand with me today, there is a scripture that I leave with you today. And I don't know if I preach short or long. I have no idea. I tried. <laughs> but the Bible that says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the key to victory, is getting your mind renewed. How do I do that? Through prayer. Through the reading of the word. By worship. I say worship. Not just here at church. Yes, by all means, you need to be at church and worshiping. But you can worship out there on the job. When those thoughts come in of anxiety, those thoughts come in of fear, those thoughts come of defeat, you begin to worship God. Your emotions aren't going to want to do it. I'm speaking truth. Your emotions will not want to sing or worship God. It wants to give in to that thought and say, yeah, let me meditate on this for a while. And man, my emotions are going to get really stirred up. Pretty soon I'm angry. Pretty soon I'm ready to take somebody up. I'm ready to do something. And all because I entertained a thought. When I could have said, no, I'm going to worship God. Do I know how to pay that bill? I have no idea. I don't got the money in the bank to pay it. But I got a God. I've been faithful to him. And he's going to be faithful to me. I'm going to worship him in spite of it. We call it, this, we call it the sacrifice of praise. It's a Pentecostal term. It's a biblical term. Amen. But that's what it is. When my emotions don't want to do it, I don't listen to my emotions. I praise God anyhow. And pretty soon, you know what will happen? Your emotions will change. Did you know that? That your emotions change? Uh, it's supposed to be a joke because everybody should understand your emotions are up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Your emotions can change as you worship God and you enter into his presence. And your perspective will change and your thoughts will change. You're like, I can see God doing that now. I can see God really doing that now. I believe God can do that. Oh, God's doing it now. See how that changed? Because I chose to worship him and not listen to the traveler. I said, no traveler, you're not staying with me tonight. You're not staying in my home. I'm going to serve God. Would you re reach out to him right now? Amen. Lord, I pray for this beautiful congregation of people. God, as we enter this year, 2023, God, I felt, Lord, that you impressed this message on me to, to, to speak it here again today, God. And I pray, Lord, that something that was said through my heart, through my mind, through my mouth today would reach those that are here today to help them to understand, Lord, that their emotions, Lord, are not in control. If they surrender their heart to you and allow you to direct their thoughts, Lord, to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. God, Lord, that scripture, God, and we stand upon that today, God, that I don't have to listen to defeat. I don't have to listen to worry. I don't have to listen to anxiety. I don't have to listen to fear. Those are the things of the devil. Those are the things of the kingdom of darkness. But I can rise above it, God, and I choose to battle today. I choose to stand. When I've done all things to stand, stand therefore. In the name of Jesus, I stand. Lord, maybe not physically, but I stand, God, in your ways. I stand according to your principles. I stand upon your word and your promises today, God, because your word is yea and amen, God, and we shall see the victory. We shall see victory this year. I, I believe that. I, I believe that we're going to see the, some of the greatest victories that we've ever seen since we've been living for you, Jesus, this year. I believe, God, because we're starting this year with our mind right, Lord, with our attitude right, God, Lord, and we're going to see great things take place this year in 2023. We're going to see mountains move. We're going to see walls come down. We're going to see doors opened. We're going to see sicknesses uh, 
de- uh, uh, removed and diseases cast out. We're going to see addictions uh, defeated, God, this year. We're going to see it this year, Lord. We're going to see it this year. We're going to see family members make their way back to the throne of God. We're going to see God, our neighbors, God, ask questions uh, about the goodness of God. We're going to see it this year because, God, our faith and trust is in you, not in the things of this world, but we trust in you and believe in you today. God, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We can do it, church. You can do it.